I told you about the Saratoga and George's Bank. They had the only real serious problems we had, and it didn't amount to anything that caused any safety or environmental harm, was mooring failures during some of the big storms you get yeah. up there in Northeastern. The Saratoga had a, had a number of them, and we worked closely with Shell on those, and also the Rowan Midland had, had some. But the problem of Modu mooring systems was then kind of <laughs> firmly implanted in my mind and, and has been kind of a crusade of mine ever since. Hurricane Andrew, there were a couple failures. I think that was 92. Mm -hmm. Then there was a long gap. And we had started talking again some more with industry and the drilling contractors about those problems. Then there was a long gap to Lily, next real serious hurricane. And then there was Ivan, which was 2004. Yeah. And there yeah, were a bunch ripped of- Ripped up a bunch of pipelines. A bunch of mooring failures and damage. And then we said, this is it. Matter of fact, there was a conference post Ivan, but pre the next hurricane season, and MMS said, that's going to be, you know, this mooring situation is going to be fixed. And it was the anchors that ripped up the pipelines, right? There's anchors say. ripping up pipelines, rigs drifting up to 100, 120 miles, and you can't have that. Yeah. And there's even, back, there's evidence all the way back to 1965, I think it was Betsy, of a platform, which was then one of the deepest water platforms, 300 plus feet, destroyed by a, a Modu drift. All the way back to 65, some guy sent it to me after I started work on this issue. So we said it, and, we're, and there were still well, people that, in denial. That was, that well, you know, I know what, that was the Blue Water One. That was Shell's Blue Water One. Was that, that hit West uh, well, Delta? I'll, I'll tell you about this, I'll tell you the story about that, uh, but I, okay. I, I, wanna, I don't want to use that, but I'll tell you, but yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it's just a matter, it was not a matter of any improvement. It was a matter of whether or not there were hurricanes. There'd be at least 50% mooring system failures where rigs were dri adrift, at least for some distance. Any more semi-submersible was going, about 50% chance it was going to be gone if it was in the path. And if it was dead in the path, it was higher than percentage in that. So. There were still people in denial at that hurricane conference, which was disappointing to me. Ivan, that, that there, there was that, that high a percentage of failure, you mean? Yeah, all, no, uh, after Ivan, even, when we pushed, showed them the statistics and talked about the history, there were still people in denial. So then what happened? Katrina and Rita, and we had, I think, about 70% of the motors exposed, of the moored semis exposed to hurricane force winds and some of the jackups going down, that's still a problem. Uh, some of those, well, that was the big problem as I see it. Lots of platforms destroyed and you know, there were things we can do to, to improve design standards. I'll be done here. Okay. Uh, but this Modu question had been going on for years and nothing had been done. So we, uh, Secretary Norton, who was Secretary of the Interior at the time, I briefed her on this, and, and Johnny Burton, who was our director, yeah. and the secretary was, I mean, anybody can imagine what a politician thinks about all these big rigs just ripping a loose. <laughs> <laughs> Three thousand, four thousand platforms out there. <laughs> There's pictures of them. Uh, grounding on Dol near Dolphin Island. And, uh, so th this really resonates with people in Washington. This is something they mm -hmm. can easily visualize. And, and she brought in top executives from all the companies. And she brought in leaders and drilling contractors and said, we ain't gonna be drilling out there anymore until we get assurances that there's improvements here. And a lot, and there was no denial at that point on any 
party in industry, and we've got very good cooperations. There's only so much you can do to an existing semi. You can increase the mooring lines. You can, you can change the material. So are there new, are there new regulations, new orders for, for mooring Well, there's a, new, there's a new standard that was developed with, with API, and there are new regulations that that new we've put out in a, a new recommended practice standard. Yeah, RP ninety five F for okay. the floaters and J, and a lot of that is now being put into permanent standards, which we have codified in in the, in the regulations. Still ongoing work, and before any operation during a hurricane season, everybody has to do a risk assessment that takes into account the uh, design of the return period for that rig, uh, proximity, proximity to pipelines and facilities that couldn't be impacted, hmm. those considerations. And it's worked, it worked very well. During Ike, uh, there were only two of 10 moored semis that had failures, and they were not major problems. Wow. They drifted a couple miles, and as predicted in the Analysis and, and no real problems. So that would be a, a real world test of yeah. how, how, what progress you'd made on the on the, on the mooring side. Yeah. And then there's a lot of work been done on, on the design standards for the platforms themselves, are tremendous in terms of deck heights. Mm -hmm. and, uh, had had those uh, did those Lily and the 2005 hurricanes really alter the understanding of the industry? Because I know the, oh, yeah. the mid-1960s hurricanes, Hilda, Betsy, and then Camille, changed yeah. the whole in, you know, and design concept for a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. And and that was the same kind of a impact you yeah. think? For and, the and one of the problems in previous design had been that we have about 50 years of good offshore data. Before that, they were taking into account onshore information on hurricanes, which is much different. And you saw with Katrina and Rita and Ivan were like offshore versus all. They were strong category fives offshore. And then two is by the time they got Yeah, much less. And so, and, uh, so the, the oceanographic data was very much understating hmm. the real conditions during a worst case storm. And there's still some issues that I'm not comfortable with, these uh, consequence-based design, whereas if you have minimal or no oil production and it's an unmanned facility, you can design to a lower standard. Well, the lower standard that was being used essentially guarantees failure <laughs> <laughs> and a significant hurricane going through. And there are a lot of other consequences from structural failure than, than the worst ones, which are people and pollution. And they can still be safety issues because you've got this platform on the seafloor. How you go, to, uh, maybe the wells haven't all been p and so you've got the challenge of doing that after the platform's been toppled and the great expense, which has mm -hmm. changed a lot of people's thinking. 